It's uh, good to be back. I want to, uh, I want to talk about a, uh, my industry taking more responsibility and building solutions to deal with the, uh, the opportunity that we have. As I said before, and I'll repeat a little bit, I have spent uh, 40 plus years in the, in the IT industry. Not only does that mean I'm old, but it also means I have a lot of experiences. Um, I started five years ago really investigating the whole impact of wireless device. I spent a lot of time with the experts that you've actually seen in this panel, and I came away with the conclusion that there is absolutely, I'm 100% convinced that there's harm. And so what I want to talk about, is, I, as I said, I founded the two organizations, or sorry, I founded uh, Canadians for Safe Technology to talk about raising awareness. I was amazed at how many people did, had no idea, had no clue, and it wasn't really their fault because my industry's done a very good job of hiding uh, CC showed us right at the beginning, we've done a great job of hiding all that information. So legally, we're actually covered. I would argue that ethically and morally, we're not, not even close to acting responsibly. Um, so I, I, I founded the organization, I got involved with the Environmental Health Trust to really to talk about uh, raising awareness and then to, to advocate. So first area I want to talk about is that I believe, so you know, when I, the whole time I was in the industry, it was just understood and readily understood that you would launch technology, it would be good, it wouldn't do any harm, and I think we've been, we've been in that mindset for the last several decades, and I think there's a shift happening. I think as insurance companies are starting to refuse to uh, write insurance policy for wireless technology, as you get companies even in their 10K reports admitting that there's a potential that they're gonna lose a lot of money from lawsuits, I think as you get, it seems like every other week there's an issue where, where there's some announcement where some company has had their data hacked. Uh, you know, we've had some fantastic ones with the Facebook one where there's tens of millions of people. I went back and researched a little bit. I'd forgotten about this, but, you know, back in 2014, you know, it was uh, Yahoo that was hacked with almost a half a billion people. Fascinating part about that was that was not made public until two years after the breach actually happened. And I think consumers are starting to understand that, and they got the company that ended up owning them got a $35 million fine, which, Sounds like a lot of money, but when you put it against a balance sheet that's got billions of dollars, it's basically viewed as a cost of doing business. So I think people are getting more and more understanding that and are starting to say, you know what, enough is enough. I think the industry has to take more responsibility for it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about another example. Um, in France, they had access to a significant amount of data, and it, it looked at, um, so there's the SAR level we talked about, and they found out that almost every single phone in France actually broke the guidelines. Every single phone. And to the point where it was not, it broke it by, you know, a 10% error by three times the level. Now, that's the good news. The sad news of this situation was the person that ended up, we call this, we dubbed this as PhoneGate, the person who ended up making this public, he had to actually go and get the government, force the government through legal means to publish this information. And so, so the, even though the government had the data, and it, you know, it took a public, a public um, uh, hanging almost to get them to, to, to disclose it. Um, so as I as I'm saying that, you know, the, so that's the, we dubbed that as as the phone gate situation. And the other thing that I that uh, you know, the famous quote from my industry, and I say my industry because I'm and you know, I'm probably one of the guys who've said it, because I you know, you know, we saw we saw Kevin before, and I kind of feel for the guy, right? He came up here, and I gave him credit for standing and doing this. It's a tough crowd. And he said, what did you hear him say? He, heard, he, he did all the sound bites that he's heard about, right? You know, the, the people who work on the towers don't get hurt. It's like a light bulb's worth of power. Well, that's not his fault. That's the people that I think that are responsible for feeding him that information. And what we have to do is we have to, we have to shift that mindset. And so what the, what the, what the, every company in this industry will not tell you these devices are safe. What they're very careful about saying is they will not ha cause harm. Sorry, sorry, they don't even say that. What they say is we meet federal guidelines. And we meet federal gu guidelines if you uh, use them as, as, uh, as what they've been designed. In other words, don't hold them to your head. Okay, let me move forward. So I think there's two things the industry needs to do. I think at the very highest level, I think we need to fundamentally make a shift that says we have to take responsibility for this. As much as the government is trying to, and I'm not saying this is abdicating the government shouldn't, I think they should take responsibility. Things are moving too fast, there's just, these devices are too pervasive. The industry has to sell police, because sell police, there's not a hope in heck that, the, that it's gonna happen. Now, that's a fundamental mind shift from move it, ship it, get market share, get more market share, first mover advantage. That's a fundamental mind shift. 
One of the easiest things they can do is to allocate a percentage of R&D. And I know R&D budgets are difficult and they're challenging and nobody wants to give it up. But I did a quick calculation. If, they, if we dedicate in our industry one-tenth of, one one-hundredth of one percent of the R&D budget, that would be $6 million a year. And the first thing I'd like to have them do is never mind allocating that money, but alloc take the money away from all the marketing campaigns that talk about or, or hiring scientists to confuse the evidence. Because every time there's a, a study like the NTP study, and Dr. Malik can talk about this better than I do, there's immediately six, seven, eight, or ten studies or a tremendous lobbying effort to try to dismiss it, to negate it, or to actually just get the government to be constipated and not do anything about it. So I think there's some fundamental things the industry can do to, to go and do pure research, give the, give the money to an, an organization for 10 years so they don't feel they're beholding to come back and prove what they're, that you can still, um, they can still get more funding. I want them to talk about looking at safer alternatives because they are out there. There's the ability with using light technology to, to charge or shared information that doesn't have radiation effects. Nobody's looking at that because, because there's, it's the cheapest and fastest way to do this is to keep using the technology we have. Could you hit that laptop? The timer's gone on. No, sorry, the other one. The, I'm, I want to make sure I don't run over. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the other thing I, that, that they need to do, and that my industry needs to do, is to, um, is to, again, change the ship that says ready, aim, ship, to is it safe, then ship it. And I think that takes a fundamental mind shift, but I think that's an important way to, to approach it and say, look, we need to test this. We need to understand this. We need to do the homework and then let's get the, 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 in, in the marketplace. I think this, this attitude that we've had, let's get it out to the marketplace and then find out later that it's, that it's harmful or it can be breached and then fixing that, I, I just think, I don't think that's a, a way to, to continue to keep working. And then finally, I think, and, and Senator Kovac did a very good job, this whole data, like we as an industry have to, have to take responsibility and show leadership to say, there's a tremendous amount of information we have, we need to protect that, we need to protect that as if it's our own, and so, and we're not doing that. I think we're failing. At the, at the more specific level, at, at the device level, I think the industry has to, first thing to do is to, is to voluntarily share all this information about warnings. You know, when I, when I talk to anybody I've talked to about this, the first thing they say is, wow, I didn't know. I wasn't aware. Well, shame on us as an industry that we're not letting people know. Now, the big argument that my industry gives is say, oh, no, that's kind of giving us our, against our amendment rights to, to, to take hold of shareholder value. Well, what we've learned in Berkeley, who have been doing this for a couple of years now, that for sure, if there was an impact on revenue in Berkeley, California, I am 100% confident that my industry would be back in court using that as an argument. So Berkeley is a great test case for the rest of the world to say you can give people warnings and it doesn't impact revenue. That's my, my theory anyways. I think we need to, um, there's technology available in Europe, uh, uh, baby monitors, I'm a granddad now so I'm a lot more aware of baby monitors than I probably want to be, but where they, they're only come on demand. In other words, they only uh, send a signal when the baby makes a noise. Or the portable phones if you have them in your house. In Europe, they don't constantly emit radiation. They only emit radiation when you lift up the receiver to make a call, and then they start to communicate wirelessly. We know that technology is available. We know it works. None of that is available in North America. And again, my industry can, can lead the charge on that. Um, we can improve the way that devices are used safely. My, one of my favorites is in the classroom. You know, there are some tablets that are not available unless you hook them up wirelessly. Why are there not hardware and software solutions for schools that are built to have the devices turned off, to have the, the Wi-Fi turned off, to, when, so that the students download the information, have full 100% access to the technology, and then they can actually go use it in a more, in a more uh, you know, safer environment. There's nobody that I'm aware of doing any of, the, any of that work. So, you know, there's more examples up here we don't have time about, but you know, this whole thing where we ship you the technology, nobody reads the manual, and I'm guilty of that too. The first thing you do with the manual, you throw it away, and then you turn the thing on. Well, all the settings are set to the highest radiation level and the least privacy and the least protective levels. Well, I, I you know, my industry would argue, and I've argued too, well, we want to make that thing easy so you can get it and use it and, and get going. Well, I think the mind shift has to change to say that's not acceptable anymore. We need to start off with a mindset that says, you're going to use this thing. Like, there's no debate now when somebody buys a cell phone, they're going to use it, right? Is there anybody confused about somebody needing to be encouraged? Heck no, that's gone. That ship has sailed years and years ago. So now let's accept that that's going to happen. And now let's set, set, set them up so that they're safe and they're in protect mode first. And let's not have the password on everybody's system be either password or one, two, three, four. Right? And every router in the world, if you want to hack into your neighbor's 
router, I probably shouldn't say this, but try the password password and try the, the admin cuss admin. I'm telling you, 99% of them are shipped that way. Okay, I probably shouldn't have said that, but anyways, maybe somebody will change it now that I've said it. Um, and then for installations, I'll, I'll wrap up, but for installations, we have to start off with a mindset that says, how do we implement this system? So let me, let me you know, Bill, on what Bill said. How do we implement the smart meter system in Michigan so that it's using this system, and, and Bill helped me, it's called the hub and spoke. In other words, it's not this blanket Wi-Fi where every home is, in, is networked with every other, every other home. It's actually on a point-to-point, -point, I'll use the term point-to-point -point basis, and you limit it. There's not that much data. You could send that data maybe when you go to sleep at night, send it down once and everybody's got everything they need. This whole thing where we're designing it with an inherent problem is just not acceptable. Okay, I wanna end, uh, I'm sorry I'm over. Just as a reminder, we do a, we've done a horrible job. I'm hoping we learn from these examples. These are the examples where we shipped it to the market, excuse me, we shipped it to the market and then we said decades later, not years later, oh my, we made a mistake. I'm hoping to be able to not have wireless radiation on this, this sheet uh, 10 years from now. I'm hoping we act on it sooner. Thank you very much.